Hey guys, welcome to this new video. Today again about e-paper displays and how to control them. In my last video I showed this small PCB which is an adapter to get SPI data from a microcontroller like an ESP32 in this example here um, into an e-paper display with a more or less uh, standard driving pinout. The reason I made it is because in most of these e-paper price tags that are now falling from the shelves these days, here are a few examples I want to go through. Um, we saw that the pinout, as mentioned, is nearly the same on all. And you could just connect any display to such uh, adapter or microcontroller that way. What we haven't talked about at all is what the software needs to do to drive them. All these displays, even if they have the same 24 pin out, like, uh, we just disconnected, like this one, this is a 24 pin FPC connector with a 0.5 millimeter pitch. Um, software wise, they can be completely different to each other. There are a few bigger companies who make these controllers that are here on the glass. It's the so-called COG, chip on glass. There are for once the SSD and on the other hand the UC microchips. It's the Ultra Chip and the Solomon something Digitech. Um, but still between them and each display there is some different uh, driving over SPI needed to get them to refresh. Like, you may need to supply a lookup table to have the driving correctly. These days it's mostly integrated in the one-time programmable um, flash on these controllers, but not all the time. You need to supply the correct um, resolution to the display. And that's where I most of the, of the time just solder, soldered painstakingly to these, uh, let's see, to these PCBs that are inside of each yeah, price tag or shelf labels as they somehow need to drive it. And I will show a quite close up of it. So it was always needed to scrape away a little bit of solder mask and then solder a few super thin wires to these data lines which are going from the microcontroller on such a PCB to the display itself. And it's really boring me that I haven't came up with it earlier as I now made such a PCB which is basically just two of these 24 pin FPC connectors and each of this line is brought out to a 2.54 mm uh, pin header and is that way possible to yeah just connect into with such a logic analyzer like here this is a bit more expensive one but you can also find these very cheap logic analyzer um, thingies on eBay to just hook them into it and normally you would solder thin wires to such a PCB. In addition you also need such an FPC cable as you need to connect the adapter board in between the stock PCB of such a label and the display of course. So I will show it later a bit more in depth. By the way, this video is sponsored by PCBWay, which did also sponsor these PCBs and I am, as always, happy with their quality. And they not only supplied these um, PCB itself, but also the whoops, stencil to simpler supply the um, solder paste at these FPC connectors. Uh, this is quite hard to solder by hand, especially with the normal soldering iron, but with this stencil you can just put it on top 
and have a perfect amount of solar paste extracting onto these pads. And yeah, check them out. They make high quality PCBs and even more like 3D printing by now and milling and even PCBA. So they will also populate the PCBs for you if you want. Let's now take a closer look at what we are even trying to achieve here. So in general, we can say each of these e-paper price tags are driven the same hardware wise. So here we got the PCB of this 11 inch version. We have a microcontroller, in this case is CC2640, but that doesn't really matter as we are only interested in the data lines. So the SPI and a few control lines in between the e-paper display, which is connected here and the microcontroller. And as mentioned, I would scrape away these data lines here. Look uh, after the pinout, what pinout is which and how to yeah, map it later in the logic analyzer view. But with this PCB, we have two FPC connectors and yeah, the data lines in between and there are 24 pins as mentioned, but the only real needed ones are the data lines here. They're a little bit bigger written into it and maybe ground and 3.3 volts to have the potential. The flex cables are here and I ordered them from eBay for I think around 10 euros, 50 pieces. So in the end this project isn't even that expensive. And as you can see, these FPC cables have the uh, plated connectors only on one side. And some of these e-paper displays have the connector on the upper or the lower part of this um, plug or of, on this flex cable. My solution to this is make the or order these uh, FPC connectors that are soldered onto the PCB connectable from both sides. So it's uh, not really viewable, but these special ones do connect to the top part and to the lower part. So they have yeah connections on both sides. So it is possible that you need to plug this connector cable and in either direction and see which one works. I will link them down in the descriptions, the connectors and also the yeah, FPC cable itself. For this full demo, I have now connected the e-paper display to the sniffer board and then with the FPC cable back to the stock PCB and also have connected the logic analyzer to the needed data pins, which are Buddy, Reset, DC, CS, Clock and Mosi, and of course Ground. And also I have opened up the Logic Analyzer software and will start the um, recording of the following yeah, Logic Analyzer data. By hitting press, uh, by hitting play and connecting the battery to the um, stock PCB we can see that the screen is now refreshing and we can wait a bit till the refresh is fully um, done and ready to get then reversed a bit. So it looks like it is done now. We can stop the recording on the PC and we can already see that we have some nice um, and plausible looking data here. If we now zoom into it, we can see that here is some data transmitting happening, which does not look right in my eyes, but if we scroll in a bit here, we can see that the SPI enable line, I did uh, configure the SPI analyzer beforehand, is only active at these areas. 
I would guess that the data in front here is a communication between the um, microcontroller and the SPI flash memory on the PCB. So they seem to use the same um, data lines or the same SPI port, just a different CS port. So if we now scroll closer into it, where the um, enable line is also pulled low, we can see here some first data transmission. And for once we can see here that as it seems the command 12 is sent, which I know is a reset command for the ultra chip um, controllers. So this first line does not seem to be reset, it's just an older variable I put in there. It seems to be the busy pin of the display. So we can see that this busy is pulled high and this comes from the display and after the reset is done, we can see here, the busy pin is going low again. After that we see a bit more data transmission. Here we see the command C and we also see that this green line is the DC pin. We can of course just figure it out by looking into the PCB where we have connected which uh, part of the logic analyzer. And by default or by all, by most of these displays, low is a command and high is data. So every uh, command, every SPI command which is sent at a low DC level is a command to the display and every SPI um, transmission on a high level is data. So we can already see some kind of pattern here. So we have always one command, then a few data uh, transmissions and a command again. So we can split all this already into multiple pairs of transmission. Then, yeah, we can see here that it is going into a body state again, the display after the command 20. And I think this is the so-called power up of the um, voltage regulator on it. And after that, again, we can see here a lot of smaller transmissions. And also here we see some slower transmissions as well. That's also interesting and this is mostly done for reading from the display. In this case I would guess it's reading the temperature of the display. So we have here a command A1B and after that we read two bytes from the display. And this is going at a slower rate or a slower clock rate mostly because this is most of the time software driven and the other transmissions are hardware SPIs. So that's yeah, also quite an interesting fact. Here we see again a lot of data without the um, chip select pin low of the e-paper display. And it would mostly look like here an image is read from the SPI flash from the PCB. And after that we see a lot of data being transmitted with the chip select low. So I would guess it reads from the external flash on the PCB and then sends it to the display and does this in multiple steps as the um, display here is a quite high resolution. We need to transmit a lot of data. This second part here seems to be the red section then where we do not see data coming from the SPI flash. So it looks like the first part is the black image and as this stock image does not have any red part, it will just send out not so just white pixels into the red buffer. After that again we see a few commands and also the 12 command or 20 here this is used to start the refresh of the e-paper and we can also see that this busy signal is 
Uh, as far we can see here is 24 seconds long and it will most likely be even longer. So this is really the refresh part. And since I stopped too early to listen for any data, we do not see the sleep or getting the display back to sleep part here. So I could just redo this yeah, logic analyzer sniffing and it will then also show the sleeping part. And yeah, in general, you could now rebuild this data transmission in an Arduino environment, in any other microcontroller environment to drive that display again. You could look into what commands are sent, what could correlate to the screen resolution to see where uh, or how high the resolution is really and where is it sent. You could try to send other data for partial refresh and such. But in general, this makes it all with this PCB so much more simple. Here are a few more examples of these uh, connectors being the same on mostly all e-paper models. So we have here a 1.54 inch version. It's yeah the same procedure. Here I did already sniff onto the PCB as I didn't have the um, adapter PCB at that time. Here is another 2.13 inch version. It's also the same. Here we have yeah the same as I showed earlier. And here is a 5.83 inch version. It looks a bit different here, but the pinout overall is again the same. Then we have another version where the connector is a bit different, but still the driving and pinout is the exact same. And yet another 1.4, 1.54 inch version. So you see that with such a simple PCB, you can very simple reverse many different models and even more you may encounter on your daily e-paper display playing. You can order it from uh, the description and also the connectors and these FPC cables from eBay. It's yeah not very much expensive and also the logic analyzer you can find multiple different versions and yeah use any of them basically which does support something over 8 megahertz of transmission so that's basically it for today um, it was a bit more hacking related than last time with the small adapter PCB it's not so in-depth as usual um, but since it's so quite versatile and universal in terms of what data transmission is really there I mean it, the goal to find out what data is really transmitted um, on these e-paper e line e-paper data lines and yeah so give it a try if you have multiple occurrence of such e-paper displays in your life like I had in the past few years and from now on I do not worry about soldering to any hidden PCB traces or such and yeah I wanted to share it. Check out PCB way. Have a nice day.